So this is my friend Lisa, who is a member of the church that Josh and I go to, Redeemer's Grace Church. And we've invited her here on the offensive line to talk a little bit about the question, how do you view truth? So if you want to share a little bit about your thoughts on this question, have you ever used it in evangelism? What does it do in evangelism? Like uh, why would you particularly use this question as opposed to some other questions? Uh, like on a previous episode when uh, Sarah came on and we talked about how do you deal with stress? Mm. So um, yeah, well, I guess what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so I really like this question because it really sets a foundation for our evangelism. Um, when someone brings up any points or if they say anything that's kind of objective to them per se, um, then you can ask them, how do you view truth? Uh, this is a really good question to bring up, especially when they bring up thoughts from their own life or experiences or anything like that. Um, I think it just sets a good foundation to sharing what we know to be truth, which is scripture. It's not absolutely necessary to bring up first and foremost, but I think as you go on, it's really important to set a foundation of what truth actually is, mm. or else uh, they might get a little bit confused and start saying their truths or what they think is truth. Yeah. It's definitely important to define the terms. I think you'll find a lot of times in conversations, or I found in, in evangelism conversations, that mm. we end up just talking past each other. Mm. So when we when yeah. we define the, the, the word first, the definitions, like for example, when we talked about faith, the common view on faith is a blind faith, which Josh and I have talked about in previous videos, but uh, biblically what it looks like is that it's a reasonable faith, right? Yeah. So it's always good to define uh, our terms right, yeah. before you can go on. Exactly. And I think nowadays, especially the way the world is going, a very common term is find your truth or find what makes you feel good or find what you think is right. Um, th there's a huge problem with that though. Um, if I say to someone, hey, I think murder is right and I think it's okay to do. Uh, of course, we know that's absolutely wrong, right? Like we as humans know that murder is wrong. There's a reason why it's punished like within even the government. Um, and there's a reason why people look down upon that because we know it's objectively wrong, right? But if someone comes out and says that, and if you don't have a foundation to know that there's only one truth, then it can get really dangerous really, really quick. Um, and I think with evangelism, that shows itself even more so. It can get dangerous really, really quick if people don't know what that there is an absolute truth, um, that, which is God's word. In the Bible, in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. However, many people completely skew that and say, no, there are many ways to God and many ways to heaven and all these things. But uh, if they're not settled on that one truth that scripture speaks about, then it's very dangerous and that actually leads people to hell because they think, oh yes, there's many ways and there's many truths out there. When in reality, objectively, if you look at it rightly, there can only be one truth. Yeah. 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 I think this question to me is probably one of my most used questions in evangelism conversations because, because it's so common, like you were saying, these days where people have relative truth. Um, where they say, oh, your truth, or when well, you said, find your truth, right? It goes back to the book of Judges, when it talks about how every man does what is right in his own eyes, because mm -hmm. everyone has their own truth. Uh, what is a particular situation in which maybe you've been talking to an unbeliever, and what might cause you to use this question as opposed to other questions in event? Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, I can think of one particular time that really stood out to me when we went on a mission trip to Provo, Utah. Um, oh, yes, and we, were right. able we actually to... did a video on that too, so yes. if you want to check that out. Yeah, it was from that same missions trip that Josh led. Um, and it was a really neat opportunity. We got to go onto the campus of Brigham Young University, BYU. So it was really interesting because I went with my friend uh, Noah and we were walking around the campus and we uh, found this couple, we started talking to them. We were asking them questions. This turned out to be an hour or two conversation. And we kept on bringing up different scriptural truths uh, to show them the true gospel 
um, who God really is. It took a while to get there, but really to show them the differences between what they believed within the Mormon faith and what we believed as uh, Protestant Christians. One of the things that we really hit on within that particular conversation, because it came up quite a few times, was uh, where they get their truth. And they were getting their truth uh, not only from parts of the Bible, but also from prophets, uh, as they call them, prophets. Uh, they were getting their truths from the Book of Mormon. They were getting their truths from the Pearl of Great Price. Uh, They're getting their truths from Doctrine and Covenants. There are all these things and places that they were getting their truths from, uh, all of which had proved to be fallible. So. So with the prophets, we had pointed out a couple of times where they were actually wrong in their predictions. Where we focus in on what God's word says about even a false prophet who is uh, talking, and if they even say one thing wrong, then they, they are to be condemned. We got to hit on that point and say, if this is where you get your truth, if you say that you believe in God's word, and if you say you believe in the Bible, and this is what it says, what is that saying about what you think is truth? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't answer. I think it's really it's a really important question uh, because it really defines where people get their source of truth and it really shows you uh, where they put all their um, money in per se and they a lot of times it's based off of just feelings and what they want to be true. I think it's also a great point that you brought up when you talked about um, Mormonism right because each of these questions that we're talking about in this series on great evangelists ask great questions it's not as if there are only some questions you can ask to atheists, only some questions you can ask to um, to people who are religious but of a different religion. But you know, all of these questions are questions you can ask regardless. It's just mm -hmm. as we continue to have conversation and dialogue with people, we kind of get a feel for how the conversation is going, and then we can think of, oh, I want to achieve this with this question. This is how I want to get to. The, this is the inroads to the gospel. So I think uh, what we see is that aside from Christianity, every other religion belief system is the same. You know, it's all workspace. It's all believing that you can somehow achieve the end result, happiness, uh, paradise, uh, in heaven um, by your own doing mm. in your own works. Right? Is there a recent, a more recent evangelism conversation that you've had that uh, we can be praying for in a way that we can kind of get to know you better? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's actually a very recent example uh, that the Lord just placed into my lap. Um, it was actually at work and mm -hmm. I was on my lunch break and uh, one of my coworkers was sitting across from me at the table and he just struck, struck up this conversation about religion. And he was like, hey, wow, that's a like, nice opportunity right there. <laughs> it was wonderful because he said, hey, like you're a Christian, right? And then he asked me a bunch of questions. So he was asking me about his um, sister's, uh, I believe a Jehovah's Witness, um, and his girlfriend uh, was part of a Mormon family. And so he was asking the differences, like, hey, what is the difference between like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, Christianity? And we sat there talking for about half an hour on our lunch break. And it was just a wonderful opportunity. I got to be to share with him the whole gospel. We also got to talk about the biggest difference between all those religions is how they each view Christ. In the Mormon faith, how they view Christ is that he was, uh, he was created uh, by God the Father. And Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't view him as God. Uh, and Christianity, we do. And by the end of it, I'm pretty sure he understood the differences between all of them is that ultimately with all those other religions like you were saying it's so different because there is some sort of i can do this to get me into heaven when reality like i mentioned earlier in ephesians 2 8 through 9 we know that we are not saved by anything that we can do but we are saved by grace through faith and earlier in that same chapter we see that we were dead in our transgressions and sins. Uh, in my profession, I know that dead is dead and you can't do anything to re revive yourself. And so I think it was really neat to be able to talk to uh, my coworker about that. And it was a neat opportunity to share the whole gospel with him and invite him to church, invite his girlfriend to church, and um, planning on following up with him pretty soon too. Yeah. Nice. yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, or wasn't made clear, kind of, it was kind of implied a little bit, but Lisa works as a nurse. So when she says that in her profession, she definitely knows 
that you know um, what death and life are like because she sees that every day. Thank you again for joining us for this episode of the Offensive Line Season Three, where we are going again through the series. Great evangelists ask great questions. So you can like us on. You can like this video. You can also follow our channel if you haven't already. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And please let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section uh, so that we can interact with our viewers as well. That we want to know what you guys thought about uh, what Lisa and I talked about, about Lisa as well, and, and um, things that you can say to encourage her to ask her questions as well. Maybe you know she can respond to some of the comments. Again, we are the offensive line and we're talking about different questions you have that you can use in evangelism. So we'll see you next week.